I got involved in a student organization in the United States called FFA, which at that time stood for Future Farmers of America. But as agriculture's changed, it's now just FFA, those the initials. And uh, that's that was my leadership training. It, it gave me the opportunity to learn about if you find something good and you find a way to develop that and to grow that, then what you're really doing is exploiting that trait to take it to, to, to the best that you can for, and if we do it for the good of all, then it's amazing what we can accomplish when we help other people get what they want. Is we get so busy being busy that we don't step back and think, okay, so what customer would I say no to because I need to focus so intently on my clarity? What, what am I doing that's, that is so different out there, yet familiar to customers that they would go, wow. And that's next on Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. So the big question is this, how are ambitious people like us who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. If you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button now. Or if you want us to improve our content, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button and give us your feedback in the comment section below. Here at Tetra Noodle, we are passionate about entrepreneurship, technology, and innovation. Every week, we bring you insightful and engaging interviews, tips, tricks, and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish new content. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. I'm your host, Manoj Agarwal, and today we will be talking with Scott McCain. Scott is a world-renowned author, coach, mentor, leader, and speaker. He teaches organizations and professionals how to create distinction in a hyper-competitive marketplace so, do, so that you can stand out and move up. As a result, his clients sell more profitably, serve more dynamically, and lead more productively in a volatile market dealing with great generational changes. He works with some of the most well-known names on the planet like Apple, SAP, BMW, Merrill Lynch, and the list goes on and on. Um, and uh, he has worked with some of the greatest companies in the world. Um, and he gets rave reviews for his work consistently from all the companies. And uh, one of his favorite references that he got from uh, one of his clients, which is a global tech giant company, Cisco. Uh, the, the reference goes like, we have booked leading speakers in the world, but Scott McCain received the highest evaluations in the history of our company. So this is from Cisco, which is a, a global giant company, not a, not a small little startup. So we are honored to have you here with us, uh, Scott. It, it's a pleasure to be here, Manush. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just an honor to be a part of this. So thank you again. Oh, awesome. So now, uh, you know, you have uh, had a tremendous career. Uh, why don't you give us uh, some highlights of, you know, how you got started? I know you accomplished a lot, even at a very young age. So can you just quickly give, a, give us a, um, you know, a overview of your journey and, uh, and how it all came about? Well, I appreciate that. I, I, I grew up in a very rural uh, community. It's uh, Crothersville, Indiana. It's a small town just north of Louisville, Kentucky in the United States. And and uh, my family owned the, the one little grocery store in, in Crothersville. So, you know, talk about uh, bootstrapping. That's that's certainly what we did. You know, my dad saved and mom and, and were able to buy their own business. And I worked in the grocery store as a kid. I, I got involved in a student organization in the United States called FFA, which at that time stood for Future Farmers of America. But as agriculture's changed, it's now just FFA, those the initials. And uh, that's that was my leadership training. It, it gave me the opportunity to learn about 
uh, how to give a speech and about how to lead an organization and about uh, entrepreneurship, in fact, because every member has to have some type of experience program where you grow your own little enterprise and grow your own little business. And so uh, that that was just a, a life-changing experience for me. So through those opportunities, uh, I rose to state and national office in that organization, which afforded me the opportunity to meet successful business people who were the contributors, right, to support this youth program. And it, it put me around other entrepreneurs who had started with very little resources and and had managed to create a a business that that was successful in 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 those respects and and so I learned from them and and uh, you know I took a couple of jobs did did some work but decided uh, boy I my heart was as an entrepreneur my heart was in building my own little business and so I I basically started with nothing and and began a business as a uh, professional speaker and then grew that into writing books and to consulting coaching uh, so it, 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 it's, it's been exactly what you talk about on your podcast about how do you begin with very little money and, and what do you do to build a successful business uh, when, when you, you don't come from wealth or when you don't come from a situation where you have you know, large investors. Uh, it, it, it really, to me, in, in so many ways, and I know we'll talk about this more, but it really comes down to you know, how, how do you create an experience that your customers want to repeat? When you start with very few customers, you better make sure they like what you do and and they're willing to spend more for it the next time and that they want to continue the relationship with you. So that's that's really been the key for me. And and you've you've mentioned some of the clients that we've been fortunate enough to have in our company over the last several years. And and it's just been an extraordinary experience. But but it really came back to, you know, a very few small customers that repeated their business and gave us the chance to grow. Awesome, that's great. Now, uh, one of the things that you, uh, I think you've been humble, uh, uh, you skipped over some details like I read um, about you. By age 21, you met the President of uh, United States in the Oval Office. So, yes. uh, I mean, that's a tremendous uh, accomplishment. So tell us a little bit about that experience. How, that, how did that happen? Well, it happened because of the the, the first time I, I met the president. It happened because of the student organization. Uh, right. The president had invited the leaders of of uh, the student organization to to meet with him, as President Ford, and and just to talk about you know what what were young people feeling in the United States and what I, you know I, I I think we we see it all the time. I mean, nothing has changed. We see it in the media to this day. Is that those who complain or those who protest or those who get upset? You know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of thing. They get the the notoriety. And and what the president wanted to do was to be around people who were trying to do it in a positive manner and and you know look forward and invest in themselves and invest in their country and invest in their business. And that's that's why we got that opportunity. I was fortunate to be. Selected for that, but I, I've got to tell you, it it is it it, it is awe inspiring. It is uh, the the opportunity. I've I've I met President Ford. I met President Carter. I met President Reagan, uh, President Bush, and and so it it's just been in, in any of those circumstances. That and that was the the incredible thing too is the later. Uh, many years later, I was invited to speak at the White House, and President Bush was in the was in the audience uh, when I had the chance to to talk there. So I, it, it it's just awe inspiring. It, it's it's incredible. But it, the other thing it reminds you is that sometimes these figures, everything from a, a president to a prime minister to a uh, you know a business leader, a business icon, I, we're we're all human. We're all people, yeah. and and it's it's it it really it, it it's inspiring and humbling at the same time, right? And 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 I I think that's one of the things that we always have to remember as we're building and growing our own small businesses, is that you know there, there there's nothing magical about the people that have achieved these positions. It's that they have found what works and. And I've got a buddy, Larry Wingett, and Larry, Larry's phrase is, you know, you find what's unique about you and you exploit it for the good of all. And, and he, he always makes sure to say, and I, I really buy into this, that the word exploit kind of has a bad connotation, but it, the exploit doesn't necessarily mean something bad. If, if, if you find something good and you find a way to develop that and to grow that, then what you're really doing is exploiting that trait to take it to, to, to the best that you can for, and if we do it for the good of all, 
then it's amazing what we can accomplish when we help other people get what they want. That's so true. So true. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, even these stories are very inspirational. And, uh, you know, you being uh, in these situations, I'm sure it, it was a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, very, very uh, out of the world experience. So, you know, congratulations on that early, early success. You. Now, now um, I know that you talk about uh, creating distinction. So, you know, that's one of the core teachings that I gathered from your, uh, from your books, from your work. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So how do you create distinction? What are the benefits of creating this distinction? Well, one of the things I learned, and it, it's funny, you know, because so much of what I talk about really reflects even back to what I learned in the family grocery store many years ago. So there are principles of business, even though we have undergone extraordinary technological change and generational changes. Uh, there, there are some of the things that still go back to the, the very basic things uh, that are critical. And, and, and so part of what, part of what I've, I've, I've researched and, and part of what I've, I've had to learn through you know, growing my business and, and situations personally that I was in is that customers don't just pick us. C customers pick us instead of the myriad of, of alternatives that are out there in today's marketplace. So what, what we have to do is to find a way to stand out from our competition so that we become the more attractive alternative. So th then I started researching, why do some groups stand out and others don't? You know, what, what, what's the key to, to being unique in the marketplace? And it really came down to what I call the four cornerstones of distinction, the four things that businesses, even individual professionals can do to stand out. And, and the four cornerstones are clarity, creativity, communication, customer experience focus. So for, for just a moment on each of those, clarity means that we're, we are crystal clear not only about what we are, but what we are not. One of the problems when you're bootstrapping a business and when you're just getting started is we, we want to be all things to all people many times. I, I think that's a natural human tendency is we don't want to say no to anybody because any business is good business. We, we don't want to lose anybody's business. And so when, when we try to be all things to all people, we dilute the very thing that might make us stand out to the competition. If we think about the, the extraordinarily successful businesses, the, we, we can say, oh, this is why they are unique. This is why they stand out. Um, it, it, it's just amazing to me that we see this around us all the time, but yet we often don't apply it to our own business because we, we don't want to say no to anybody. So yeah. clarity means you not only are crystal clear about what you are, you, you've also precisely defined what you are not. And, and, and many of us don't do that in the early stages or as we're building our business. But the second one is creativity. We've got to do something innovative. We, we can't just be a carbon copy of our competition. There has to be some twist to it, something unique, something a little special about it that, that draws the attention of customers. The third is, is communication. And what I found there is the, the distinctive professionals, the distinctive small businesses, there's some kind of story there's some kind of narrative that, that catches the attention, whether it's, you know, you started in a garage, which could apply everybody to HP, to Apple, to, uh, you know, even Walt Disney drawing cartoons, you know, it, 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 uh, uh, whatever it is about the story of the origin of your business, or perhaps a, a, a narrative about how a customer benefited or their life or business grew or changed or got more profitable because they dealt with you. The, the distinctive organizations are able to communicate through a compelling story, through a compelling narrative. And the final, the customer experience focus is that distinctive businesses are, are really concerned with how it feels to, to be our customer or how does it feel to be your employee? What are the experiences that we're creating in the marketplace? Because at the end of the day, customers want to repeat the experiences that they've enjoyed and are compelling and if it's not enjoyable or compelling, why wouldn't we buy from Amazon, right? Or why wouldn't we buy from your competition? So the distinctive organizations focus on the clarity, the creativity, the communication, and the customer experience focus that can that can make a difference. Yeah, that's so true. Very well said. Now, you. Uh, you know, in 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 many ways, you know, these things are. Um, it's it's sort of straightforward, right? Like this this is not rocket science, uh, but I think the devil is in the details. So uh, you know, when you sit down with uh, any leader, any entrepreneur, and you need to focus on these four tenets, what like do you have any frameworks? Do you have any 
processes that you follow to get them through this and sort of reach the level of clarity and reach the level of communication that that is ideal for for them? That, that's a great question. And by the way, I, I could not agree more uh, yeah. with that. The, you know, the, it, it's easy to say these are the four. Uh, the, yeah. the, the problem is how does it work for my business, right? Yeah. And, the, and not only yeah. that, but then how do I go out and execute it? Because as you say, I mean, it's it, it's in the details of creating the plan for your business, and it's in the execution in the marketplace uh, that 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 this really occurs. Yeah, there, there, there's a process for each one. With with clarity, we work with them on what I call a high concept. The high concept is a, a short. Fr we talk about elevator speeches. People don't people don't listen to elevator speeches anymore. You've got to have it defined very precisely. Uh, whether you use it as a marketing tool or just internally. Uh, and, and I know I talk about big businesses here, but the only reason I do that is because they're, they're universal. It's something that everybody understands. It's true in small business as well. But, but for example, Southwest Airlines in the United States is founded on cheap, safe, and fun. Mm -hmm. So not only is it inexpensive, but also it's, it's an extraordinarily safe airline. They put a focus on that. But then lastly, they, they put a focus on making it fun. Right, and uh, creating a more enjoyable experience than what you have as a passenger elsewhere. Uh, Domino's Pizza was founded with the phrase "your pizza in 30 minutes." Now they've they backed off that 30 minutes because of safety uh, uh, concerns. But at the at their beginning, it was "your pizza in 30 minutes," which meant we're not just a pizza business; we're a delivery business, and we have to focus on how do we get our systems and our processes in line so that the pizza gets to you faster and hotter than the competition. Those are things that made them unique. Uh, yeah. We could go through any business, you know, the Steve Jobs saying our, our goal are products that are insanely great, right? So it, it was the, the the imaging and the design and every even down to the box was going to be, it would just feel differently to open a box from Apple than it would from any of their competition. So it, it's finding that. So we go through and try to help uh, each professional or each small organization create this this six second phrase that you can say this is what business is about what what we tend to do is to create a mission statement which tries mm -hmm. to cobble together everything that we do and it and it's not compelling to customers I, I don't care about whether or not you enhance shareholder value or I don't care about whether or not you you know meet the needs of a diverse guy what I want is my pizza in 30 minutes right? I mean yeah, exactly. uh, the, I think it's important. It's kind of a, a little bit of a different discussion, but not really. Uh, I think, you know, the, the Simon Sinek's book about starting with why I, I think is great in terms of the internal thinking that we entrepreneurs must have. However, I, however, I, I also think it creates a problem because our customers aren't going to buy our why they're going to buy our how if, if I take my car to you to get fixed, and it's not fixed properly, as a customer, I don't care that you have a great why. I, I need your how as a mechanic to, to get the job done right. And, yeah. and so what I'm trying to focus on on clarity is not just the why, not just why you're doing what you're doing, but but to, to your point earlier, how do you deliver it? Uh, how do you get it done? How, how do you make the process work? With creativity, we do an exercise that that basically I, I I learned from watching how movies are created, and and and, and what we want as as we go see a good movie is as as weird as this phrase sounds is derivative but different. In mm -hmm. other words, if if you look at Star Wars, or yeah. you go back and look at it, what the, you know what was called the westerns of the 1960s, the storyline is very much the same. It's just that George Lucas put it in outer space r rather than in the Old West, right? But yeah. the story of the good guy and the bad guys, the force, you know, using the force, the you know, all of the things about that um, mm -hmm. were very derivative of earlier works. It's just yeah. that he had the brilliant idea to put it in, in, in outer space in a, in a future time. So yeah. we as the audience, we, we don't want it so different that it feels – foreign and totally unfamiliar and all that. But at the same time, we want a little twist on it. So we try to, we try to work with groups in terms of that's how you kind of create innovation is you think yeah. in terms of how do we take what people know and then put a little twist on it. 
in terms of communication, we help with a narrative. We, we go through a storytelling process of the three act formula of telling a story. And, and how do you, how do you define your story uh, quickly on that? The three acts storytelling formula is act one is you introduce characters in conflict. So if we think about any movie that we, uh, uh, let's use an old one, Taken. Remember Taken with Liam Neeson? So in the beginning, his daughter is kidnapped, right? Yeah. And we know that he's a divorced dad, and he's trying to be connected with his daughter, and he loves his daughter very much. Now she's kidnapped. Okay, so we meet the characters, and now there's a conflict. The daughter has been kidnapped. We, the audience, want to know what happens next. The second is the search for resolution. It's all the things that he did. Second act's always the longest of the three. It's all the things he did to try to rescue his daughter. And the third is the heroic resolution of the conflict. He saves his daughter from the kidnappers and reunites with her, and, and the bond between father and daughter is better than it's ever been. Here's our problem in business. We start our stories in act two. We typically want to tell the customer all the things that we're going to do to solve their problem before we've gone through the process of, of intensifying the conflict and, and talking about all the different alternatives that are out there in the market before we get to the heroic resolution that makes the customer go, oh, wow, yes, exactly. you're the one I want to do business with. If we don't have a compelling act one, we don't care what the resolution is. So the process that we work our, our clients through is how do you, you know, how do you create a more compelling act one? How do you intensify the characters and intensify the conflict? How do you get part of the other thing is the audience wants to see themselves in that situation, right? I mean, mm -hmm. any dad wants to think I would do for my daughter what Liam Neeson did for his daughter. We know we can't, right? But, yeah. but we identify, we identify yeah. with the father that cares so much for the family, right? And so because we identify with that, then we are interested in where it goes. And, and so what we have to do as we create our own stories for our business is how do we get customers to identify with us or to identify with the challenges that other customers, you know, if they're a prospect, how do we get themselves to see themselves as customers? So we work through that process. And finally, the customer experience focus, uh, we have, we have trademarked and, and for a long time, the term ultimate customer experience uh, in the United States. And so we, we talk about, what is that ultimate experience and what are the specific steps? You know, they, it really gets down to saying if everything went exactly right, yeah. what would that be? And it's obviously different for every business out there, but, but so many of us, you know, and I, I think that's why podcasts like yours are so important because we, we get so busy doing what we do. Mm -hmm. Seldom do we have time to think about what we do. And you have listeners that that are listening to this podcast as they're driving in to open their stores, or driving into their businesses, or or on their way home, or or what? And and we have to we have to think about these things. And, and I know my dad with a grocery store. It, he he was so busy with the grocery store. There there was so little time to think about. Well, how, how do we do, how do we separate ourselves in the competition or what do we do to differentiate or how do we, how do we do these things? And there, you know, there weren't podcasts in those days. And that, that's why I think yeah. the mission that you're on is so important because, you know, boy, it'd be great to have a business where, where cash flow and, and uh, initial funding and all that was no problem. But, but yeah. most of us, most of us do have problems with that, right? We, we've yeah. got to pay the bills this month. What are we, you know, what are we going to do? And, and, and those are things we, that's the challenges. We get so busy being busy that we don't yeah. step back and think, okay, so what customer would I say no to because I need to focus so intently on my clarity? What what am I doing that's that is so different out there yet familiar to customers that they would go, wow, we love how you do it, but you do it differently than the other people that are that are dry cleaners or that are, you know, gas stations or, or grocery stores or whatever. Uh, how do we tell that story in a way yeah. that, that people go, wow, that's who we want to do business with. And then when they do business with you, how do you deliver the customer experience? So not only do they repeat their business, but, but they become our advocates in the marketplace telling others about us. It's, yeah. it, it's all incredibly critical. That's great. That's so, uh, well, so well put together. Thank you so much for sharing it. And then I completely agree, you know, we get so busy in doing our own processes or running our own chores and tasks. Uh, we forget about, you know, this sort of human to human uh, 
uh, touch and uh, trying to understand what people want and what space they are in, what's uh, you know what mind frame they are in. And so I think all the, all the steps that you're pointing towards is is uh, sort of recreating that human connection between the business and the customers, right? Yeah, well, and it goes back to you were kind enough to mention what the the good folks at Cisco have said, and and it really goes back to that. Even even if our business is software, uh, even if our business is being a partner, uh, you know, r retailing and selling, uh, you know, devices that they can get a million other places, it it gets back to exactly what you just said in terms of the personal connectivity and and the humanity of it, and and I think sometimes we get so. I don't know, taken by or overwhelmed by or connected to the technology that we forget about the human element. And yeah. without that, you know, a, a long, long time ago, John Nesbitt in the book Megatrends said the more we, be, we become high tech, the more that we will desire high touch. And I, I don't think there's anything true or ever spoken. And, and, and we see that so much today in that, yes, you may have you know, great software, but if, but it, for example, if I don't know the story of how it would work for my business, then why would I become a user? Uh, yeah. we, we have to continue to focus on that aspect of it, uh, to, to help us in, in these, uh, technologically driven times. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I mean, as uh, social media is, is becoming part of our lives, I think, uh, more and more it's evident people want authenticity on social media and and so the trend is exactly how you put it like you know the more technologically advanced we are becoming uh, we we inherently are demanding that authenticity because we miss it i think yes um, yeah. all right great now uh, one you know you obviously have this all this knowledge all this experience uh, how do you correlate that with whatever we are teaching in uh, educational institutions where do you think the education system is going is it providing enough for us to prepare for the future, or is there something lacking there? I definitely think there's something lacking, and I, I'm really glad you asked that because, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I spoke to a, a few years back, I spoke to a group of surgeons. It was a, a global conference for a group of surgeons, and I was the first non-doctor, you know, non-surgeon to, to have ever addressed the group. And so, you know, after the program's over and it went very well and they were very kind to me. And, and so the program's over and we're a bunch of us just stand around talking afterwards. And they said something to me I've never forgotten. They said at, at, at many universities, it is possible to get your, your medical degree, to be an intern, to be a resident and never take a course on bedside manner. Never, never take a course on the patient experience. But yet we know that the reason in the United States in particular, that malpractice suits are filed is not because of medical error as much as it is the patient felt the doctor didn't care. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, if in AIG and other insurers have, have stepped forward. And I mean, that's, that's, that's a, a, a well-known instance in, in, in the healthcare community. But, but then I thought, well, let's, let's take it to the next step. And I, I did a little bit of research and I found that in, at, many institutions, you can get an MBA and never take a course on the customer experience, oh, which to okay. me is the same situation, is that mm -hmm. what we are doing are yeah. developing and training business leadership, and business consultants, engineers, mm -hmm. and um, what, we, what we are doing is uh, not teaching them about how to create a better customer experience. Which, what, what business succeeds without customers? What business yeah. succeeds without pleasing customers and, and helping customers? And if, if we don't have that, I, I don't know how a business survives, yet we are educating and training people how to read balance sheets and P&L statements and what EBITDA is and, and the technical aspects of business without teaching them the human side of it. And yeah. I, I, I think that's part of where we have to change in our educational approach is yeah. to make certain that we have, have taught them uh, and, and help educate them in the human side and, and the important role that it plays in every business. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a great thought. And I think things are changing slowly, you know, with all the new mediums available to us, uh, you know, people can get information outside of their educational system as well. Yes. So hopefully all this will sort of feed back into the cycle and, you know, our, our educational universities will evolve eventually. 
Uh, on that thought, thank you so much, uh, Scott, being for being with us and sharing all your knowledge and wisdom. Uh, now, before I let you go, can you tell us how people can reach out to you and uh, get in touch with you? Oh, that's very kind. I appreciate you asking. Um, uh, all my books uh, create distinction. My latest book, Iconic, uh, they're all available, obviously, on Amazon or other you know retailers. So uh, my, my last name, by the way, is spelled M-C-K-A-I-N, a little bit unique, different spelling. But just look it up on Amazon, Scott, M-C-K-A-I-N. My website's just scottmccain.com. Uh, I have a podcast. It's just a short daily message of about five to ten minutes. It's Project Distinct. And it's everywhere that, that podcasts like this are available. So uh, through any of those, why they can, you know, they can track me down and see what I'm doing. And on, on uh, we have another website called Distinction Nation, and there's a lot of free resources there. In fact, there's a 14-day audio program that you can download on what it takes to create personal distinction. So I wanted to provide a lot of free resources for entrepreneurs to be able to access information on what does it take to 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 stand out in the marketplace. So uh, distinctionnation.com, Project Distinct is the podcast, and uh, scottmccain.com is the website that, that they can find. Awesome. And thanks That's for great. asking. So, <laughs> no, I will, I will definitely add those links into the show notes so that you know people can reach out easily. So thank you so much once again. Uh, it, it has been a tremendous experience talking to you. Thank you so much. Well, it's been my honor and privilege to be with you, and I, I look forward to the chance to talk again and to meet personally sometime in the future as well. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And that's all for now. Until next time. And if you are an existing or an aspiring tech entrepreneur, then I invite you to check out my new online workshop, Bootstrapping Your Tech Startup Dreams. Go to bootstraptechstartup.com and sign up for free. I want to make sure that more successful and sound decisions are made every day in your tech projects. Let's start finding solutions to your problems. So go to bootstraptechstartup.com and I look forward to helping you with your tech projects. If you want more engaging videos and insightful interviews with industry's thought leaders, then check out other videos we have picked for you. The link is right there. And if you want to be notified about our new content, please do consider subscribing to our channel.